In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yesterday we had the first portion of this text about the suffering servant of God, Jesus Christ, who comes to shepherd his people. Today we hear Zion's response. God says, Sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted. And Zion's response is, Really? I don't see it. Instead, Zion's response is, The Lord has forsaken me. My God has forgotten me. And he had every right to do so. Israel, God's bride, had been warned. Continue on in your path. Continue worshiping these false gods. Continue on in your spiritual adultery, your idolatry, and I will leave you. But there's always hope. We hear that through the prophet Hosea. For once there was no mercy for Israel, but one day there will be mercy. Once they were called not his people, but one day they will be his people. But first, there is the time of exile. For God follows through with his discipline of his beloved, just as parents follow through with the discipline of their children. If you keep hitting your brother, there will be a consequence. I don't know what the consequence happens to be in your house, Cecilia, or in, in other people's houses, but I know what it is in my house. Hit your brother and you'll end up going to time out. You'll be sent away in exile from the rest of the family. Well, not forever or even 70 years, but for a little time, right? So also now Israel is in the time of exile, and they look at the Lord, their groom, and they say, you've forsaken us, you've forgotten us. Your face is no longer shining upon us. Your blessing is no longer with us. We are afflicted. How long, O oh Lord, how long? And I think that today, even more than perhaps a week ago, we understand this. We feel it. We see it. It's palpable, right? We are in a time of affliction as a country and as individuals. And we feel the separation between one another as good, right, um, uh, restrictions, mandates are imposed upon us to help to quarantine or keep away this virus from many of us, or slow its spread. But we feel lonely as a result. We feel the distance. But we look at things and then we wonder, why is this happening to us? God, have you forgotten us? God, have you forsaken us? And what he speaks to Israel is also true for you. Three pictures given, where God is continually assuring us that he has not forgotten or forsaken us. The first is that of the nursing mother. Can a woman forget her nursing child that she would have no compassion on the son of her womb? Perhaps in some extreme circumstance a mother may abandon her child. But even then, 
Her body responds to that abandonment. She feels pain within herself, both emotional and physical, as her nursing child is away from her, even more so if she can still hear his cries. And God says, though these may forget, I will not forget you. The second is that of the writing upon God's hands of Israel. Now, keep in mind that the Old Testament context of having something written on the hands is actually the master's name being written upon the, the slave's body. Notice what God says. Your name is written upon my hand. Just as we look at the cross today, and we see that there, in Christ's pierced hands, true God in the flesh, he bears our hands. And what that means for you is that he is yours. After all, the slave bears the name of his master. Christ is yours. But also, you bear his name, placed upon the forehead, placed upon the heart, covering you with water. You are his. Joined to Christ Jesus' death and resurrection, he will not forget or forsake you. Even when you have been unfaithful, even when you have transgressed, even when you sinned, he says, Come to me. You're mine. My forgiveness covers you. My righteousness is yours. The final picture. The walls of Zion are ever before God. He is watching over them. Protecting not the city, of Zion, but protecting the people of Israel, thus protecting you. And these walls that he speaks of are not these earthly physical walls that were torn down over and over again in Jerusalem, but the heavenly Jerusalem. Those walls are the walls that God speaks of here. Those are the walls he's prepared for you, the city he's prepared for you, the place he's prepared for you, the place that you'll be gathered into, called by name into the city where your Father who loves you welcomes you home. So today, if you are feeling forgotten and forsaken, Know where to look. Look to the promises of God that He has made to you. The promises in Holy Baptism. The promises in His Supper. He will not forget or forsake you. And when going through trial and tribulation, if you are wondering if this is some kind of punishment upon you, look to the cross. That is where God forsook his own son for you. So that you should never be forgotten, nor forsaken. Thanks be to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.